You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. 2021 with businesses back in business, economies re-emerging. We're no longer under lockdown. Well, I mean, most of us, some countries, Australia, severe lockdown over one case of the Rona. I exaggerate, but not by that much, right? So in 2021, we have the perfect storm for container shipping. What does that even mean? Well, if you go into any port and here in the Seattle, uh, Seattle city of Seattle, we've literally got the port of Seattle, which is a major shipping port, whole bunch of ships out there waiting to offload their stuff, because we don't have enough guys and gals to get the stuff off the ship, and then truck the, sh the stuff to wherever to store it, all that good stuff. Don't crane operators, you got a labor supply issue, right? I mean, just all across the board and just all facets of business. But container shipping, the numbers on container shipping, it's, it's pretty crazy what they started off in 2019, where they are right now. And we wonder why all of our prices go up. And we wonder when we go to the grocery store, wasn't that that much last week? Oh, it was. It's just a lot more now. Crazy stuff. That's what we're covering today. Why are we covering shipping containers on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast? Well, because it's a matter of doing business and it impacts everybody's lives. And if you are doing a remodel or if you are a builder, try getting all of your product all at once. That is mission impossible because there's supply chain stuff and a large component of that is shipping containers. All right, before we jump on in here, if you're new, thanks for joining. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies here in the greater Seattle uh, real estate area. Real estate area, that makes no sense, but you know what I mean. And I read the news. Let's get into it. Okay, here we go. And then the tagline for this article, and this isn't The Economist. We are, we're getting into some serious stuff here. We're really delving. No more of this bubblegum media. We're just, we're going to go right into it and just talk about stuff. A giant ship wedged across the Suez Canal. Remember that? Oh, that was horrible. Record-breaking shipping rates, armadas of vessels waiting outside ports. COVID-induced shutdowns. The business of container shipping has rarely been as dramatic as it has in 2021. The average cost of shipping a standard large container, which is a 40-foot equivalent unit, or FEU, has surpassed $10,000, some four times higher than a year ago. The spot price for sending a, such a box from Shanghai to New York, which in 2019 would have been around $2,500, is now close to $15,000. And I'm told that is actually higher, and that could be as high as $25,000, a tenfold increase from the 2500 it was in 2019. No wonder we've got some inflation on our goods, right? I mean, and this stuff just all gets passed along to the consumer. If the vendor has to pay more for shipping, somebody's going to pay, because otherwise this doesn't make sense. You can't stay in business hemorrhaging money. So you got to pass those costs along to the consumer. And the consumer goes, oh, inflation. But don't worry. Federal Reserve has said, this is temporary. It's going to go away. Things mellow out. There won't be any inflation. What inflation? Securing a late booking on the busiest route from China to the West Coast of America could cost $20,000. Realistically, it's probably a lot more like 30, right? Any of my shipping container friends out there, leave me some comments. Love to know what the real deal is. Because sometimes by the time I read these stories, enough time has gone by where it's like, okay, yeah, that's, that's more. It's going to cost more. In response, some companies are resorting to desperate measures, desperate times, desperate measures. Peloton, a maker of pricey exercise bikes, is switching to air freight. Man, the costs are also sky high. Double those in January 2020 as capacity, half usually provided in the holds of passenger jets, is constrained by curbs on international flights. Home Depot and Walmart, two American retailers, have chartered ships directly. Pressing inappropriate vessels into service has proved near 
disastrous. An attempt in July to carry containers on a bulk carrier, which generally carts coal or iron ore, was hastily abandoned when the load shifted, forcing a return to port. More containers are traveling across Asia by train. Some are even reportedly being trucked from China to Europe. So China to Europe, then shipped across the Atlantic to avoid clogged Chinese ports. All right, how are we going to get it there? Are we going to ship it the whole way? No, let's just go back to the John Candy planes, trains, and automobiles. We'll just see how we get our stuff there, right? Trains, planes, and lorries can only do so much, especially when it comes to shifting goods halfway around the planet. Container ships lug around a quarter of the world's traded goods by volume and three-fifths by value. So what was that? Quarter, so 25% by volume the, of the uh, world's goods and three-fifths by value. The choice is often between paying up and suffering delays at ports, stretched to capacity, or not importing at all. And if importing is part of your strategic uh, part of your business, not importing said goods means not doing business, not an option. Globally, eight meter TEUs, the 20 foot equivalent units, those are smaller, are in port or waiting to be uploaded. Uh, eight million of these are either in port or waiting to be uploaded. Eight million. That's up by 10% year on year. At the end of August, over 40 container ships were anchored off Los Angeles and Long Beach. Those are the stories you see where you're like, all right, I know that's the port. I, I can see the space needle there. And then what are all those dots off in the distance? What's all that about? Those are ships. It's crazy. At the end of August, over 40 container ships anchored off LA and Long Beach. These serve as car parks, parking lots for containers, says Eleanor Hadley of Drury, a shipping consultancy. And in order to avoid clogging ports that in turn lack trains or, or cars to shift goods to warehouses that are already full, the pinch point, she, she adds, is the entire chain. There is no pinch point, is what she's saying. Hey, this whole thing is we, we don't have enough people to run the whole chain. Therefore, ships got to stay out there, wait, everything's backed up. Any, anybody who does Amazon like reseller. Um, yeah, they're constantly talking about oh, my shipping costs have gone through the roof. Or I'm bringing part of my order I'm bringing the first part of my order in just had this con uh, conversation with my guy Darian, uh, bring the first part of the order in via air, which is way more expensive. But then at least you've got some product to sell when you need to. And then you bring the rest of the product in via shipping container. And you know, that could take who knows how long, but you just wait because what else are you going to do? Not sell stuff? Well, that's an option, but that's also not really how business works. For years, container shipping kept supply chains running and globalization humming. With shops, shelves fully stocked and products from the other side of the world turning up prominently on customers' doorsteps, the industry drew barely any outside attention. Everything's great. Everything's going well. Not a problem. But then when people start to say, I can't get my stuff, that's when it goes sideways, right? Shipping was so cheap that it was almost immaterial, said David Kirstens of Jeffries, which is a bank. By now, but now, as disruption heaps upon disruption, the metal boxes are losing their reputation for low prices and reliability. Few experts think things will get better before early next year. So we are in this until maybe quarter two of 2022. The prolonged dislocation could even hasten a reordering of global trade. That sounds a little grandiose, but when you've got an issue like this, a lot of folks with a lot of money involved, right? We need to change this up. Do we need to figure out an alternative to the shipping container deal? Shipping is so strained in part because the industry, which usually steams from short-lived boom to sustain, to sustain bust, was enjoying a rare period of sanity and the run-up to the pandemic. So all was calm. Things were run, rolling along just fine. Pandemic hits. Stephen Gordon uh, of Clarkson's, a shipbroker, notes that by 2019, 
the industry was showing self-discipline with the level of capacity in the order book for new ships under unaccustomed control. Things were just going swimmingly. Then came COVID-19. Expecting a collapse in trade, shipping firms idled 11% of the global fleet. One out of 10 ships. All right, stand home. Don't have any stuff for you to send. No demand. In fact, however, trade held up and rates started to climb. And flush with stimulus cash, Americans started to spend. So right off the bat, we had that, we had just the, the whole gears just came to a grinding halt. And even though that happened, people were at home. They were buying stuff. Remember right at the beginning of the pandemic, everybody was like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to get a lot of stuff so I can remodel my home. And then we started to hear things about Home Depot's out of this, Home Depot's out of that. Oh, you can't get this. And then we had, you know, obviously we had the well toilet paper. I mean, uh, toilet paper just gone. Paper towels and toilet paper. I mean, that was just crazy because because when push comes to shove, the one thing you really need apparently is toilet paper. In the first seven months of 2021, cargo rev volumes between Asia and North America were up 27% compared with pre-pandemic levels, according to BIMCO, a ship owners association. Port through, uh, throughput, meaning stuff going through ports in America was 14% higher in the second quarter of 2021 than in 2019. The rest of the world, meanwhile, has yet to see, they've hardly seen any growth, if any. Throughput in North, Northern Europe is 1% lower. Yet rates on all routes have rocketed because ships have set to sail to soothe lucrative trans-Pacific trade, starving others of capacity. So only some of the routes, the routes that are commanding the most money, they're getting the attention. The other ones, mm, not so much. Okay. A system stretched to its limits is subject to a cascading effect, says Etan Buckman of Freitos, a digital freight marketplace. Rerouting and rescheduling would once have mitigated the closure of part of Yanqian, one of China's biggest ports. Is that spelled uh, pronounced correctly, Yanqian? I don't know. Empty containers are in all the wrong places. Port congestion puts ships out of service. In July, the industry moved 15 million containers, more than before the pandemic. Yet the average door-to-door -door shipment time for ocean freight has gone from 41 days a year ago to 70 days, says Freitos. Some observers think normal normality may return after Chinese New Year next February, uh, typically, which is typically a low season. Peter Sand of BIMCO says disruptions could take a year to unwind. So we might be at this for a year because this, this, all these ships backed up and all this stuff has to get processed. And that's just going to take time. And we're working through a massive labor shortage in the meantime. Lars Jensen of Vesperi Maritime and advisory firm notes that a dockers strike on America's West Coast in 2015 caused similar disruption, although only in a region. It still took six months to unwind the backlog. I think I remember that. I remember thinking, what? what is all that about? Now it kind of makes sense because now we're dealing with basically same version, global issue, just don't have enough workers. On the demand side, much depends on whether the American consumer's appetite for buying stuff continues. Oh, I think it will. I think it will. Although retail sales fell in July, they're still 18% above pre-pandemic levels. Uh, that points out Oxford Eco Economics, a consultancy. But even if American consumer demand slackens, firms are set to splurge as they restock inventories depleted by the buying spree and prepare for the holiday season at the end of the year. Got the holidays coming up. Got the holidays coming up. So, so many companies are bringing stuff in, getting their holiday inventory ready, right? That's happening right now if it hasn't happened already. Because we're in September. You got October, November, December. And with the amount of time it takes to get stuff, you need to have placed your order probably a couple of months ago, right? And there are signs that demand in Europe is picking up. So all of this places pressure on the whole system. In a sea of uncertainty, one bedrock remains. The industry flushed with profits is reacting customarily, setting an annual record for new orders for container ship capacity in less than eight months of this year. 
uh, says Mr. Sand, but with a two to three year wait, this release valve will not start to operate until 2023. And the race to flood the market may not match torrents of the past. There are far fewer shipyards today, 120 compared with around 300 in 2008. And shipping responsible for 2.7 of global carbon dioxide emissions is under pressure to clean up its act. Tougher regulations come into force in 2023. So we're going the wrong way with shipping, right? I mean, uh, it's not very green. Oh, no, we need to get some electric ships in there. Let's, you know, let's just make everything green. The upshot is that the industry will remain cyclical, but with rates normalizing at a higher level, said Mark's, Mr. Scow. Discipline may be more permanent, both in ordering and managing existing capacity. More consolidation has helped. The top 10 firms have, have 80% of capacity compared with 50 to 60% a decade ago. All right, so top 10 firms have 80% of all the volume going through. And a decade ago, they had maybe half, maybe a little over half. The impact of higher shipping costs depends on the type of good being transported. Those hoping to buy cheap and bulky imported goods, such as garden furniture, might be in for a long wait. Mr. Buckman notes that current spot rates might add a thousand bucks to the price of a sofa traveling from China to America. Moreover, the effects on product prices so far have been dampened as around 60% of goods are subject to contractual arrangements with shipping rates agreed in advance and only 40% to soaring spot prices. So a lot of the stuff that's going through the system now, it, it, you already had ship, agreed upon shipping rates. So those aren't impacted, but you still, when you've got close to half that are not agreed upon up front, yeah, and you've got tenfold increases on the, on the far outside, that's tricky to do business with. We've had a, we've had a price not improvement on your good. We're going to need to charge you a little more, <sighs> 10 times shipping. Nonetheless, for most products, shipping costs tend to be a small percentage of the overall cost. The boss of a large global manufacturing base, a manufacturer based in Europe says the extreme costs now are, they're bearable. All right. Nor might shipping rates rise that much further, even if disruptions continue. Uh, CMA, C CGM, the third largest container shipping firm in the world, stunned industry watchers on September 10th when it said that it would cap spot rates for ocean freight. Others could follow suit. All right. So they're saying, all right, we're going to cap out at this. We're not going to, you know, ream you guys that much more. Um, decarbonization costs mean rates will eventually settle at a higher level than those before the pandemic. Yet research by Maersk suggests that this may not affect customers much. Even if sustainable fuel costs three times as much as the dirty stuff, increasing per container fuel cost to 1200 bucks across the Pacific for a container loaded with 8,000 pairs of trainers, shoes, the impacts on each item would be minimal. So you think about smaller products and you think about how big a shipping container is, and then you think about hundreds of shipping containers, thousands of shipping containers, the per unit price of shipping is what we're saying. Hasn't been impacted that much. But overall, I mean, it's a ton. The, abs the absolute number you go from 2500 bucks up to 15 grand, maybe 20, maybe 25 grand. Those are huge numbers. Those are huge increases. But when you spread it out, okay, yeah, it makes sense. So for their part, let's we're going to skip down here. So for their part, shipping firms may be preparing for more regionalized trade. Let's keep it local. The order book is bulging for ships of 13 to 15,000 TEUs. Those are the big ones. Smaller than the mega vessels, which can only be handled at the biggest ports. Uh, okay, so 13 to 15,000 TEU, that's the smaller than the mega vessels, which can only be handled at the biggest port. Sorry, my shipping container lingo, it's no good. I'm, I don't really know much. Finding new manufacturers is hard. However, especially for complex products and building buffers and building buffers into supply chains is costly. 
But conversations about deglobalizing are said to be starting among some makers of low cost clothing and commodity goods. If higher costs persist and reliability remains a problem, some will judge that the advantages of proximity to suppliers will start to outweigh the costs of shipping goods made far away. Interesting. So what we're saying, let me bookmark this spot. What we're saying is that maybe we don't rely upon shipping quite so much. All right. Remember that shipping snafu we had in 2021 and 2015? Let's try and circumvent that a little. How about we bring our stuff in from hmm, domestic? What kind of impact would that have on China? Hmm. Yeah. Even shipping companies admit that current high rates and poor reliability make consumers feel fleeced. With few alternatives to ships to move goods around, the only choice will be to move the factories that make them. Hmm. We're going to move all those factories from China to here? United States? No, we are not. Okay. So, I think the moral of the story is you're gonna see you're gonna see supply chain, you know, impacts to the supply chain through maybe the middle of next year and probably deeper than that. I mean, it could take a year for a lot of this stuff to unwind. Some of it's obviously going to unwind much sooner, but there are so many different facets right now of just business that are lacking personnel, they're lacking the labor to run them. And a lot of folks are talking about, okay, the federal unemployment benefits, those extras, those are gone now, those have been sunsetted. Those are gone now. So we should be getting, you know, workers back into the workplace. But the whole disruption, shutting businesses down, reopening businesses, you know, and, you know, supply chain was right in there. And everybody figured, okay, things are just going to tank. We're going to shut all these businesses down, not only because they're being mandated to be shut down, but because we don't see the demand there. And the demand just kept on a going. We still wanted to remodel our homes. We still wanted to exercise at home. So we're going to buy a whole bunch of exercise equipment. We're going to buy dumbbells. Everything was bought out and on back order, and it just took forever. And then you started hearing about well, it's shipping logistics, shipping logistics. I can't, I can't get my stuff. It's on a slow boat from China, literally. Can't get my stuff and ah, my boat's stuck in port. It's going to take two weeks to do whatever, whatever. And it's going to take another month from them. And, and we're not sure we, you know, don't have enough truck drivers to haul the stuff don't have enough crane operators to get the ships off the ship on into the port, you know, all that stuff depends on shortage of laborers to run those businesses. And that is ongoing. So it's going to take a while to unwind, I think, a lot of these issues a lot longer than people want and a lot longer than people are willing to probably go, okay, how long is this going to be upside down? Probably a while. So I guess expect to see prices continue to hike for a while until things kind of level out. That's kind of my thought. Because I think there can only be so many price increases before the consumer goes, oh, I'm just going to move on to that. And so we've still got these price increases that are probably coming that we haven't seen yet. Because the consumer can kind of only really stomach so much at a time. So that's where people saying, yeah, inflation, it's just short term. Well, I don't know. I kind of think it's a little bit longer term here, but that's just me. All right. That's it for me on this one. That's it for me on shipping containers. They cost more now. That's the bottom line. There's lots of them stuck outside of port. That's another bottom line. And then we don't have the labor to bring the stuff in. Even once it gets to port, that's a lot of uh, that was a lot of that wasn't covered here. There was more just, hey, here is what is going on with shipping in general. Shipping containers cost more, sometimes as much as 10 times as much as they did in 2019. That is nuts. But it's again, it's a supply and demand thing. Here we are. So that's a little bit of your shipping talk for today. How's that? So shipping. One of those things I've never really paid a ton of attention to during the coronavirus, you certainly do, because then you realize 
this is literally why my stuff is more expensive and it's taking longer to get to me because the whole shipping deal, the whole supply chain, I bet you've had more conversations about supply chain than ever due to the coronavirus. You're shut down, you're open, you're re-emerging, all this craziness, right? All right, that's it for me on shipping, shipping containers, all that good stuff. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Until next time, stay safe. We'll talk then. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.